the idea of this workshop really is to kind of explain how interview process the, the process works hopefully um, clear away any kind of myths or misconceptions you may have about these interview the interview process so what i'd like to do um, is trying to summarize what we'll be talking about um, so we're going to try and give you an overview of the interview process um, how it works and what, what what to expect we will be telling you a little bit about what we look for when we're interviewing applicants and hopefully give you an opportunity to to talk to some of our student ambassadors and find out their experience when they were interviewed at Downing um, and hopefully at the end we should be able to give you some advice some tips on how to prepare for your interview so the overview of an interview process so the interview is only one part of the admissions process as I mentioned earlier on this morning in my talk um, typically they happen around December um, you will be informed from by a college by the end of November whether you've been shortlisted for an interview and usually in most cases the college when they contact you will be able to provide you information about who the interviewers will be the date your interviews will be happening at and the times your interviews will be taking place there typically are two interviews which are between 20 to 30 minutes and they're normally two academics who will be interviewing you at a time in one interview. Um, uh, they, they usually run through the first two weeks in December and then we normally make our decisions in early January. Um, all of the interviews are normally held within the college and they are always mainly focused around academic uh, discussion uh, around the subject that you've applied for. So why do we carry out interviews? Well, uh, it's, it's a really important part of our application process. Um, majority of applicants, if not all of them, are predicted the right grades to meet the entry requirements. If it's an arts and humanities subject, it'll typically be an A star and two A's. And for one of the science subjects, it will be two A stars and an A. Um, and most of the applicants will have performed very well in their GCSEs as well. So majority of them would have a number of A stars or grade nines in their GCSEs as well. So what we try and tend to do with the interview is really try and see if we can go beyond what the app, what information we have about applicants and see if there's a way of, of so being able to differentiate between the applicants who are, who are performing ex exceptionally well on paper so far and probably have done very well in the pre-admissions assessments as well. So this is one way of trying to be able to differentiate between them, to be able to evaluate and then select candidates that we would like to make offers to. And the key thing we are looking for when we're interviewing candidates, is this candidate going to be able to keep up and cope with the academic work at Cambridge? Are they going to be suited to the course here? And the academic years are very short. They're eight week terms, they're very short. They go very quickly. There's a lot of teaching that takes place in those eight weeks. And we want to make sure that the candidates that do come and study at the university are ones which can keep up with that workload and cope with it as well. The last thing we want to do is invite someone to come and study at the university, won't be able to keep up with the workload. And then at the end of the first year uh, are struggling and not being able to continue with their studies. Uh, whereas if they'd gone to another university, would have done very well and flourished academically as well. So we want to make sure that we, we choose the right people, mainly because it's to be as fair as possible to the applicants who are coming to the university study. So what do we look for when we're carrying out an interview? So obviously we talked a lot about how motivated you are, how enthusiastic you are about the course. We are looking for the ability to use, you know, your ability to think out the box, be able to think independently. Can you take information in an interview presented to you and put that together to solve a problem, you know? So it's the ability to take an idea and, and connect it together to be able to solve a problem that's given to you. It's something that may happen in an interview. Um, we're really looking to see what kind of skill sets you have and how can they be, help you when you are studying here at the university. So what to expect at an interview? I mean, normally I would, I mean, 
one thing I would emphasize to any applicant, when you come for an interview, don't think of it as like a very formal interview. It is a discussion. Think of it as a supervision, a tutorial class, which is happening between you and two other people. What we're trying to do is gauge you and try and present you with information to see how well you can work through the problems. And it's very typical of an environment of a typical supervision that we would normally do when an undergraduate is studying at the university. It's presenting them with ideas, concepts, problems, and seeing how they can piece the information that they have learned in the lecture courses, use that information to piece it together to be able to answer the problem. Just to be able to think on their feet, be able to think independently and work through the problems. There isn't any hidden agendas in the interviews. We're not trying to set anyone up. We're not trying to set them up to fail. And, and we're not really looking for someone who is able to work through the problem as fast as possible to get to the answer. What we're really interested in is seeing how you work through the problem, the thought process you take, the learning journey you take, the journey you take, and the learning experience you take away from the information given to you. So that's what we are really looking for when we are carrying out the interviews. And, and so in the interview, like I've already mentioned, you, they may ask you to look at, uh, uh, explain something that you've talked about in your personal statement. They may ask you to talk about something that you've read about, that you've mentioned in your personal statement. Uh, they may present you with some literature information, give you some information there, ask you to read a piece of text, and then be able to interpret it or to, to put a discussion or an argument together around certain statements mentioned there. If you're going for a science interview, they may ask you to look at a problem. They may present a prop in front of you and ask you to look at the physical forces involved in, in the movement in that prop. Um, they may present you with some data, a graph, you know, ask you to interpret the data. You may look at mathematical problems. There's a whole range of things that could happen. But at the end of the day, what we are fundamentally doing is presenting you with information, seeing how you process it, and how you use that information to work through the question that's been presented to you. It's that journey you take in working through that problem. So my advice to applicants are think out loud um, when you're working through your problems. You know, if you are presented a problem, think out loud because we want to see how you're thinking through the problem. And also, if you're asked a question, if you're not sure about it, ask for more clarification. Do ask a question if you're not sure about what's been asked of you. So there is a lot of uh, resources available online. Um, there's a lot of um, information available on the university YouTube channel. Uh, I would definitely recommend the, the interview videos that have been put up by the university. They really present uh, a, a good represent, representation of what actually happens in the interview. All right, so we'll talk a bit more about this later on, but I'll hand over to uh, Katrina now. Thank you very much. Um, so hopefully that's given you an idea of kind of what interviews are and kind of what to expect. Um, I'm going to invite four of the ambassadors um, to speak about how they found um, their interview. Um, back. Uh, some of them maybe just last year, but others a few more years ago, like Maddie. <laughs> Yes, um, so obviously I'm in fourth year now, so my interview was a while ago, um, but I still remember quite a bit about it. So I thought um, I'd just tell you kind of about the day and the experience and what it was actually like in the interview. Um, so I travelled up to Cambridge by car with my mum the night before because I had quite an early interview um, and I get really stressed um, about being late. So I wanted to be there early. Um, and then I had one interview and had about an hour gap and then the other interview. Um, and the gap between interviews can vary quite a lot. Some people have their interviews quite close together. Some people might have one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Um, it's just kind of luck of the draw. Um, so I got to Cambridge the night before, woke up, got dressed, went over to Downing and they had kind of a waiting room um, to sit in before the interview. Um, so I sat there, just kind of got in my zone. I was quite nervous as everybody is. Um, but then once you go actually into the interview, I personally found it a lot more relaxing once I was in there rather than waiting. Um, so I had two interviews, as I think you guys just mentioned, um, two 20 minute interviews. And in each one, there was two interviewers. Um, everyone really, really friendly, um, kind of walk in, they relax you, they'll ask you a couple of introduction questions like, you know, how, how are you doing? All OK, and um, just to kind of get you to settle in um, and then they'll start the actual interview. Um, 
And I thought I'd tell you specifically about the kind of second interview I had. Um, when I talk about it, it sounds like a complete disaster, but can't have been because I did get an offer. Um, so this one was kind of a maths based interview. Um, and I walked in and they were like, they named six topics in maths. Um, and they were like, we can do any one of these. Um, which one do you feel most comfortable with? And I didn't recognize any of them. Out of all six, I didn't have a clue. So I told them that. Um, and they were really nice about it. And they picked one, quickly explained the basics to me, and then went on to their kind of planned interview question that they would have done anyway. Um, so obviously that made me quite nervous, but I went along with it. Um, I got the question completely wrong, nowhere near the right answer. But it was quite fun, just learning on the spot, kind of going with it, what they did. Um, and they were really supportive the whole way through. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that so that you're not scared if you don't know the answer, or if you think you're getting everything wrong, or if you do get everything wrong. Um, because as um, Catherine and Cameron said, it's very much, how do you learn? Are you teachable? Do you respond well to input and kind of take it on board and apply it? Um, so yeah, that was my experience. And I just thought I'd also say, I really wasn't sure whether I wanted to go to Cambridge um, fully when I applied. But after the interview, that's when I decided I really did, um, because I ended up really, really enjoying it. Um, you know, the style it was delivered in, I knew that was kind of representative of what supervision would be like. And the actual interview made me really excited for supervisions and that whole idea. Um, so yeah, weirdly, it was only after my interview that I got really, really keen about Cambridge. Um, so yeah, I hope that's given you a bit of an insight. I don't know who's next. That's me. Um, okay, so I'll talk about my natural sciences interview. So I applied for biological natural sciences and in my personal statement and on the SAQ, I kind of said, you, you give an indication of the interest you have within science and what you've studied before. So at A-level, I've listed the topics that I covered. Um, so in my two different interviews, they kind of split them up by subject. So one of them was more based on biochemistry and the other one was based on more data handling and maths. Um, because I'd indicated that I was interested in biology and chemistry. Um, there wasn't any material to look at beforehand, but once I got to one of my interviews, they did show me a graph and then we kind of had to like look through it and interpret the data and just talk through it on the spot. But that was, it was okay. I was quite nervous actually, but um, they really understand that you might be like really nervous or you might not know, um, but that's absolutely fine. What I would say, is treat your interview like a conversation like no matter what subject it is um and don't be afraid to ask them questions back so if they ask you something and you don't really understand it or you want them to clarify don't be afraid to say can you repeat that or reword it and they will happily like explain a bit more um because they want you to do the best you can in the interview um, yeah, like Maddie said, make sure that you're really comfortable. So if that means going there early and like looking around so you know exactly where you need to go, if that makes you calmer about things, then do that. Um, again, when you're like getting ready for your interview, dress comfortably. You don't need to wear a suit or look really formal. You can turn up in a jeans and t-shirt if you want to. They're not really going to judge you on anything other than how you respond to the questions and um, how you think. So when you're doing your interview, just be calm um, and kind of think out loud and just talk about your subject. Don't really worry about anything other than that. Um, I don't think I've met a single person who is at Cambridge or at the interview who said they thought the interview went really well because the questions are designed to challenge you and you probably will get them wrong, but they're looking more about what you think and how you approach different things that you've not seen before rather than expecting you to get the right answer yeah um for me uh, my interview i went the night before as well and i um, spent the night there um, i went on my own so it was kind of daunting um but there's like loads of student ambassadors around so you're definitely made to feel comfortable and you're given a lot of direction as well um before both of my interviews i was given a text to read so for hsps that's the structure i don't know if that's changed but um when i did my 
interview, I was given a text, um, given a time frame to read a text. And then when I went into the interview, they asked me some questions based on the text. Um, but I would say the majority of it was based on what I wrote in my personal statement. And that's why I stress that um, for people to make sure you actually know what you're talking about. Like if you read a book and um, you only read a chapter, make sure you stress that um, because they will ask you about that. So most of my interview was based on um, what I put in my personal statement. Um, I would say it flowed like a conversation. Um, I definitely wasn't as nervous um, inside and once it started as I thought I would it would be. Um, they do ask you some challenging questions and they often ask you questions based on your answers so that's why it kind of flows like a, a conversation Um, I would say the most important thing is to never say you don't know because part of the interview process is to see how you can cope under like pressure in circumstances and how you like handle things you find hard and obviously Cambridge is very academically vigorous so it's better to try your best or ask them to ref phrase then to just say you don't know and kind of um, give up but yeah I had two interviews and um, with two um, interviewers in each one um, and I would say when you finish the interview they don't really give much away so from when I um, came out I didn't really know how I did but I wouldn't um, let that um, discourage you because um, you could do a lot better than you thought you did um, but yeah Hi, uh, I'm Faith, um, and I interviewed for geography at Downing almost three years ago now, um, so I'm going into my final year. Um, basically, my interview experience um, was quite a challenging one, so I had a lot of stuff going on at home at the time, so I was in a, like, a very challenging personal situation, which was um, quite stressful. Uh, and also, uh, I'm from Scotland, and I had horrendous travel issues. So I remember it was a winter and it had snowed really, really badly. Um, the, so I was meant to be going down the day before, like everyone said, to really get acclimatized, stop being stressed. And then um, basically there was lots of snow and I booked a flight uh, and my mom had meant to be coming with me, but she then couldn't because of all this family stuff. So it was a really stressful situation. I ended up not getting the plane. I had to get the train, I had to get the sleeper train. Um, so I only had about five hours sleep and then I couldn't go to the hotel that I'd booked because they wouldn't let me in. So I ended up, I brushed my teeth in the train station in Cambridge and I went and sat in the Starbucks that's outside of Downing and I, I was so, so worried and so stressed. And I thought, I can't do this. I don't know why I'm here. Why have I done this? I like, I'm not, I'm not ready to do this. I'm not in a good frame of mind. But then you go into the interview and like some other people mentioned, there are student helpers there. So I did this um, this year uh, and there's student helpers at the desk. And honestly, if you're feeling stressed or worried about anything, just ask them and we will be happy to help. So if you'll get a map with where, you, where you're going to go for your interview. Um, and once I was there, because I had so much stress, I actually kind of got there and I thought, right whatever happens now I'm just going to go and do it because it's taken so much stress to physically travel here um, and I think that that I'm just going to go and enjoy it and I think that's quite a good attitude to try and have I know it's really difficult and obviously I would not recommend recreating the stressful travel experience that I had but I think yeah going in and trying to enjoy it and because it's a really amazing opportunity to have the opportunity to discuss the subject that you're really passionate about with academics who are at the top of their field in that subject and it's a great opportunity. Um, so for geography, uh, what you get is you have, um, you get presented before your interview with a sort of article or something to read and you have time to read that before your interview and then you go into the interview. Uh, but also I would say don't panic too much about that because the majority of my interview was actually, that was sort of a starting point for my conversation. And then the conversation flowed into lots of different things. Um, and you kind of build on maybe some initial ideas for a little bit and then you change. So there's plenty of opportunity if you get the reading and you think, oh my goodness, I don't understand what's going on here. Then don't panic. Take your time, read it carefully. And then if you get in there and you say and say to them, oh, I find this part of the reading really challenging. And yeah, don't be afraid to admit that you found something challenging or you didn't quite understand something. But ask them to explain it to you and show that you're interested in developing your ideas. And yeah, I would say the interviews are a very stressful experience. Um, they, ca they can be very stressful, but they don't need to be stressful um, because it's a really amazing opportunity. 
And also one final story is that I spilled an entire bottle of water over the floor of my final interview, like the carpet of the, my final interview. Um, and I ran out of the room uh, because I just dumped an entire bottle of water on his floor and I just left um, and I got an offer. So any, do not worry if you come out and you think that was terrible because they're not meant to be easy, but don't panic because it does not, even if you think you've done badly, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case. Brilliant, thank you so much. Um, I hope it was really helpful um, hearing um, from the students and how they found their interviews and how it is more of a conversation. And I'm pretty sure all of them said that once they were actually in there, they were a lot less stressed um, than they were um, kind of in the build up to it. So how can you prepare then? Um, you're in the preparing stage at the minute. Um, the best thing to do is to read around your subject, kind of outside of your school curriculum. You know, what are you interested in? Do the super curricular stuff um, that we've been talking about all day. Develop your own um, opinions and interpretations on um, different topics and different situations. Um, talk to other people um, about your subject. You know, have them ask you questions. Um, ask each, if you know someone else applying for a, the same subject. Um, ask each other questions. And you know, if you can explain um, something, then it means you you do know it and you have learnt it. Um, make sure you look back over your personal statement and any written work um, that you sent to us, basically anything you sent to us, make sure you read it, maybe that's the night before or on the day, just to remind yourself of what you have said, because um, it can be a while since you've read them. Um, make sure you practice any uh, pre-interview tests, um, if there are any, some, in uh, some um, subjects ask you to do a test on the day, to make sure you're prepared for those and know um, if that is you. Um, and then have a look at our website and information online, have a look at the university and other college websites as well. Um, there's so much out there about um, preparing for university, uh, preparing for interviews. Um, so do make sure um, that you do immerse yourself in those. And there's lots of videos as well. It's not all about reading. Um, so this is on the uh, university YouTube channel um, as well. Um, it's quite short in comparison to the other one. Um, giving you an overview of um, kind of what you need to do um, to prepare for your interview. And then at Downing, um, we've put together um, a few videos. Uh, we haven't got every subject, um, but we've got a couple of subjects um, on our Discover Downing YouTube channel, um, and it's called Meet the Interviewer. Um, so each of the people you see on the screen are interviewers um, for their subject and um, they um, discuss what they're looking for at interview. Uh, so we've got one on Asian and Middle Eastern studies, one on English, one on human social political sciences and one on physical and natural sciences. Um, and we're hoping to get some more done and more up um, shortly. So final tips and advice uh, for you then, the kind of general advice, um, start these super curricular activities now. If you've not done it before, that's okay. You've got plenty of time over the summer um, to kind of read around your subject, immerse yourself in your subject um, and find lots of other things that you're interested in. Um, make sure you um, reread anything um, that you do send to us. Give yourself plenty of time um, to get to the interview. Make sure you wear something comfortable, um, as Sonna said. Um, and then when you're actually in the interview, make sure you explain your thinking. I'm pretty sure one of my ambassadors said, um, think out loud. Um, we can't um, guess what's in your head. Um, and you know, when your GCSE maths, you're told to kind of show you're working out, do the same thing, you know, show you're working out. And, um, you know, Maddie was talking about how um, she didn't get the maths question right at all. She was nowhere near it, but she still got an offer because the interviews were able to see um, her thought process and uh, where she was going with it. So even though she came to the wrong conclusion, they were more interested in how she got there rather than if she'd come out with the answer, whether it being wrong or right. Uh, don't assume that if you're being prompted that's a bad thing and um, they're wanting to kind of push you further um, and get you to think further and think deeper um, on the particular issues or topics or questions um, that they're asking you and as Sonna said you know when you leave an interview pretty much everyone feels that it's gone badly because you'll get to a point where you don't know um, any further and that's okay um, because they're wanting to see how far they can push you so that's all right. 
Um, and then don't feel obliged to ask us any questions. If you don't have any questions um, for us, then that's absolutely fine. You don't need to um, have any questions at the end of the interview. So I'm going to bring the student ambassadors um, back now and ask them for their kind of tips and advice. So you heard from four of them about the actual interview experience. Um, what advice do they have um, for you as potential applicants who are preparing for interview? Hello again. Um, so my first bit of advice would be, I would say it's impossible not to be nervous unless you have nerves of absolute steel, um, but try and enjoy it as much as you can because it is, um, just a really incredible experience. You're getting to go to Cambridge, chat for 20 minutes to two academics um, who are, you know, really interested in what you're interested in. So it is a fun and exciting experience. Um, to try and kill the nerves, identify what gets you stressed. You know, is it you'll be stressed if you're there three hours early and have to sit and wait? Or is it you'll be stressed if you don't get there more than two hours early? Um, you know, are your clothes making you comfortable? All of these things. Identify what helps you relax and do that on the day of the interview. Um, I would also, when you're preparing, think about it as you're going to go and have a chat with somebody about your subject. Don't think of it as them testing you or trying to trip you up. You are going for a chat. They're finding out what you're interested in, how you think, what you know. So that's how I would approach it. You know, don't think that you need to go in having revised the entirety of the human body um, and have a full understanding of every organ system because they're not examining you. They have the, your A-level results for that. They're just seeing what you're interested in and how you think. Um, in terms of in the actual interview, my tips would be, um, I would just take a pause before you answer. Even if you, know, you understand the question, give yourself that one moment of silence just to gather your thoughts um, and kind of give out a good answer rather than jumping straight in with no idea where you're going. Um, I think when I was in my interviews, I asked, them to repeat the questions quite a lot because it just gives you that extra couple of seconds to think if you need it um, and it also makes sure you understand exactly what they said. Um, so yeah and my main tips would be I think we've already kind of said it but don't get flustered if you don't know it the whole point is they'll ask you questions you don't know so think out loud speak as much as you can if they ask you something you don't know and you're silent they can't help you with that if they ask you something and you start giving an answer that's a bit wrong, they can help you and they can steer you back in the right direction by saying, oh, maybe don't go down that path. How about you think about this instead? And that way you can both kind of get more out of the interview rather than if you say nothing, they have no idea how to help you. Um, so those would be my tips. Try to enjoy it as much as you can and reduce all of your stress. Take a pause before you answer um, and don't worry if you're not getting everything exactly right or rattling off revised answers because that's not how these interviews work. Uh, yeah, I agree with everything Maddie just said. Um, my main piece of advice, I think, not just for the interview, but through the whole uh, personal statement interview, the whole application, it's just be yourself. Um, you don't need to think, oh, there's kind of like, I have an idea in my head of what a Cambridge student should be, so I'm going to try and fit myself into that. I'm going to try and talk in a different way. I'm going to try and write using loads of fancy words. Just don't, don't do any of that. Just be yourself. Um, even in your interview, like dress how you're comfortable, speak how you're comfortable. The admissions tutors will want to know more about you and they want a genuine impression of you and how you think and your love of the subject. And if you don't speak in a posh voice that or like something like that it just does it doesn't matter just be yourself through the whole thing um other advice i would say um before you go to your interview just have a quick read through your personal statement and make sure you remember everything that you wrote about um because you could get asked about it usually the first like two minutes of your interview will probably just be based on something you know so it could be oh you wrote this in your personal statement um, tell me more about that and then after that you're a bit more comfortable they'll kind of move on into things that you've not really seen before and they'll build on that until you're in a completely unfamiliar topic so again just be relaxed don't be afraid to ask questions and just do your best you'll be fine um, because there are two interviews as well if you think your first one didn't go very well um, just go to find a quiet space, sit down and just relax, just completely forget about it, clear your mind and go into the other one with a completely fresh brain and just again, just do your best and you'll be fine.
Yeah. Um, so a lot of what Maddie and Sona have said are is pretty relevant to engineering as well. Um, but I would say that the engineering interviews are more technical and knowledge based. So it is really helpful to go over your A-level notes the night before to kind of just refresh your memory uh, with some things that you may have forgotten that you did quite a while back. Um, and since the focus of the interviews is mainly to see how you think and how you approach challenging questions, there isn't really um, much of a need to do lots of preparations uh, for general questions or questions based on your personal statement. These may come up, but um, you're more likely to be answered to be asked questions that are uh, challenging and kind of maths and physics based. Um, so I would say have a go at solving similar questions at home. Um, there are quite a few resources online where you might be able to find uh, questions that go beyond the A-level curriculum and just have a go at doing these um, to see how you might be able to approach them uh, in an interview. Um, and also, if you're able to, um, try to do a practice interview at home or at school, either with a teacher or a parent, and get them to ask you some potential interview questions, um, just so you could kind of get a feel for it and practice. Um, and also at the interview, don't be afraid to ask questions. You're not expected to answer immediately and instantly know um, how to tackle a problem. Um, so it's more than okay to ask for help. Um, I would say um, everything that's been mentioned previously is pretty um, relevant to HSPS. Um, I would say the most important thing is to believe in yourself because if you get to interview stage, they've clearly seen some type of potential in you based on your academic profile and um, your personal statement. So I'd say um, try not to compare yourself to other people and um, be as confident as you can be. Um, and as I said before, just um, know what you're talking about, I guess, and persevere and don't say, I don't know, just keep trying. And if that means you have to take a pause, that's also fine. Um, but I'd say an, a wrong answer is better than no answer. So, yeah. Um, for law, firstly, I would say, um, I googled some practice questions and also watched some of the um, Cambridge YouTube videos on what the interview was like just to kind of get an idea of what to expect because I didn't know anyone that had done it um, and then also I would say keep up to date with the news and current affairs not because when in interview they're going to ask you what happened on the 4th of June with this particular example but just because um, you can then have a discussion about relevant and topical issues and pick certain articles you find interesting and just have a discussion with your family, friends, teachers about what, what you find interesting about that particular article, what are the pros and cons um, of the author's particular point of view. Um, and then I would also say, make sure you know your personal statement um, I only got asked one question on mine just as an icebreaker in law um, but you don't if it's the first question you don't want to mess it up so make sure you don't lie you know what's on your personal statement inside out and then following on from what has been said before um, don't be afraid to get things wrong it is a discussion there is no for law anyway there is no right or wrong answer it's all about um, your thought process and how you got to a particular idea and then don't be afraid to change your mind if they give you a different scenario um, yeah that's what I would say so for classics um, so like prep for the interview I suggest doing something that that Ibsmo uh, Cambridge YouTuber suggested so once you have your personal statement finished um, at the end of every sentence, like put a question mark because you could be asked anything that's on that page. Um, and then by the end, like of the whole, like by the time the interview came, I had like a pack of information. I was just all about the personal statement. And that just helped with my confidence and just knowing that you know stuff about the things you've written. Um, and also to practice like the interview technique, 
there's not really a technique you're just trying to explain things that are in your thought process um you might want to ask the teacher to have a discussion with you about your personal statement or any like unseen material um and that'll just help because talking about academic things to an adult is a bit different to like talking to your friends or your family um so for classics you'll uh, probably be doing like a, a latin aptitude test if you've done if you're doing latin a level um that's basically just an unseen translation in an hour in time conditions like exam conditions um you might want to use past papers that are on the downing website or there's loads of cheap books that you can get on amazon like second hand or your school might have i use this one um is the hide latin translation one that has like it's a bit more difficult than a level so you're, you're kind of in like a safe space um and also try and learn all your as vocab then um the interview day itself is quite intense because you have well i had two interviews at downing then the test and then another interview at a different college so, that, so i had to go to trinity hall um so on the interview day make sure you've eaten even if you feel like you haven't you don't want to eat um, and that you're comfortable like walking, don't wear heels because you might have to run to a different college. Um, but uh, yeah, and also just verbalise your thought process and don't be asked for, don't be afraid to ask for clarification because you'll probably see something that you've never seen before. So just like talk about the things that are coming in your mind and then work from that. Yeah. This has kind of been touched on a little bit already, um, but the best piece of advice that I got before my interview was to try and see it like a mock supervision. Um, try and imagine that your interviewers are just your lecturers and that the kind of discussion that you're having is a slightly higher level version of one that you might have at school. Um, and so again, lots of people have said they're not looking for perfect answers, they're just looking for you kind of engaging with what they're saying, um, being able to kind of hold your own in a discussion, things like that. Um, and it is partly for the interviewers to see whether you are suited to that learning environment, but it's also for you as well. Um, so I think Maddie said that after the interview, that was what made her sure that she kind of wanted to be at Cambridge. Um, and so the interview is a good way of you figuring out if you do enjoy that style of teaching and learning um, because it is fairly unique to Cambridge. Um, in terms of history specific preparation, um, so before one of my interviews I had an extract that I had to read um, and the main thing you can probably count on being asked is can you summarise the main argument. Um, so a good way to practise that is just um, extracts questions in history A level um, and maybe asking your teacher for some articles to read and um, trying to skim read them quite quickly um, and just focus on looking for sort of the heart of the argument. Um, also for my interviews, I know it varies uh, subject to subject, but I did get quite a lot of personal statement questions um, and I think it is important to know your personal statement really well. Um, and also you will get questions that you didn't expect and you can't ever predict an interview um, but you can sometimes make an educated guess about the sort of things that they might want to know um, so for example if you've mentioned books or articles um, just maybe think about kind of pros and cons things you thought um, were convincing things you weren't so sure about um, also if you have time maybe read a review of uh, something you've mentioned um, just so you can talk about it critically um, and I think the other thing would be again for history um, maybe looking at old copies of BBC History magazine or History Today or something like that is quite useful um, and just generally um, I know that applying to Oxford can be quite a daunting or maybe intimidating uh, process or at least it seems like that when you start um, but just remember that you 100% deserve to be there at interview um, and you will have interesting things to say. Um, I just echo everything that's been said before. Um, 
when you go to the interview, um, it can be really easy um, to be not necessarily intimidated, but you know, stressed out and thinking about, oh, what are those people over there doing? Are they reading? You know, are they are they reading and preparing for your, their interview? Are are they looking smarter than me? It really try not to stress for other people and just focus on yourself, um, because you're the person that's going to do the interview. And like Lamorna said, they've clearly asked you to interview because they think that you should be there and that you should be given a chance to express your ideas um, and have this opportunity. So don't panic about other people and other people being better than you or anything. Just focus on yourself and focus on how you can, you know, make the most of your interview um, as an opportunity to get into Cambridge, but an opportunity in general, like people have said before, to talk to some people that are really passionate about your subject like you are. Um, I would also really recommend if you do have the opportunity to practice um, in an interview scenario um, with a teacher um, or with a family member, um, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I think it's also helpful if you can do it with someone that you don't know really well. So say um, you do it with another teacher in the department that you don't necessarily have for class every day because it kind of helps to get that experience of talking to a new person about your subject. Uh, but if you don't have that opportunity, don't worry. I think just practice talking aloud to yourself um, about a, 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 an issue that you find interesting can be really helpful. Also, in the interview, I think it's important to remember, uh, and this can be a way to calm yourself down, that they are not trying to catch you out. They want you to do as well as you possibly can. So like everyone else has said, don't be afraid to ask questions, ask them to repeat things, take a pause, because if that's what, because they are there to facilitate you having the best opportunity to show how you think, um, why you're interested in the subject, um, and they're also not going to ask you any weird questions. <laughs> they might ask you challenging questions, but they're not going to ask you. You might have heard sort of horror stories about people being asked you know, really random questions that you've never thought of. It's all really based on your personal statement and on um, material around your subject. So they're not going to ask you something really, really weird. Um, and also, it's quite a good chance to get a flavour of what teaching is like at Cambridge. Um, Obviously, normal teaching in a supervision environment um, is a slightly less stressful experience, but it's a really good chance to get a flavour, like Maddie said, of how teaching is often delivered at Cambridge with you in a small group with an academic discussing some specific issues around things that you've read, things that um, are relevant in the subject. And it's a really good chance to get a flavour of that. So I would say my main feedback is treat it as an opportunity for you to have a really interesting discussion. But also, like I said about personal statements, remember that the interview is only a small part of your application. Um, it kind of feels like a really big deal and if it doesn't go perfectly, then it's the end of the world. But they're taken into context with your predicted grades, your personal statement, your recommendations from your teachers, um, maybe a test scores that you've got, um, and the interviews. So it's all part of a wider application process. So if it's not perfect and you think it was a disaster, one, it probably wasn't, and two, it's only a really small part of your application. Thank you so much. Um, hopefully um, that was really helpful. Um, I think it definitely was um, to give you an idea of um, what the interviews are like and also have um, some tips and advice uh, from the students who have been through it themselves. So just to remind you then um, that the interview is only one part of the admissions process, as Cam said at the beginning. Um, this is the whole admissions process and we have gone over um, everything today um, to try and give you um, a good overview of what to expect in the next um, few months. Um, but just to emphasise again what Cam said at the very beginning of the day and um, what we're actually looking for. So we're looking at your academic ability and your potential. Um, we might be looking at particular subject requirements at particular subjects, um, but we want to see that you're um, suitable for the course and that you've got a genuine interest in that subject. And we're not interested in your extracurricular activities that are not relevant, um, your background or your school as well. So what can you do now then? Um, there's loads of super curricular stuff that we've been talking about today. Um, there's examples on the board, but there are plenty, plenty more. Um, please do um, 
find um, some super curricular activities um, to do. Um, there's also the Oxford and Cambridge Collaborative Network. Um, sorry, it's a long um, title, um, but they um, have a website and the University of Cambridge have just put a, um, a document on there with um, super curricular activities um, by each subject. And um, so do have a look on their website. Um, I'll try and put the link in the chat um, at the end and you can um, find suggestions from our academics for your subject of things to get you started. Um, it's, it's not a tick list. You don't have to do all the things on there, um, but it's just for people who are unsure where to start. 